check with the doctor at the hospital later on. He'll be able to tell you a little more about it. The blow doesn't seem too severe, but there's always a possibility of concussion or a fracture. And I know he'll want to take some x-rays. Mm -hmm. How did it happen, Ben? We don't know yet. The burglary report was phoned in by some woman. When Matt and I got here, we found her lying there on the floor. Strange stuff. Well, I'll see you later. All right. Well, Brent, this is Mr. Rayburn, the office manager. Lieutenant Guthrie, Mr. Rayburn. Hello. Happy to know you. Her name is Ann Brenizer. She's 39 years old. She lives on Union Street. She's our cashier, Lieutenant. How long has she been with you, Mr. Rayburn? Oh, 17 years. Have you had a chance to check the contents of the safe yet, Mr. Rayburn? Just petty cash for stamps and things like that. Our bookkeeping ledgers, that's what's been stolen. All our business records. Have you any idea why anyone would want to steal those? Those records were invaluable to us, but not worth a plug nickel to anybody else. Well, did you have an audit coming up, anything like that? No, we just finished the audit last month. Everything in order? Yes, the books are in perfect order. Lieutenant, did Ann discover the burglary when she opened the office this morning and reported to you? Well, it looks like it, Mr. Rayburn. And someone was still waiting around for her when she was phoning. Possibly. Personnel manager's got the whole office force lined up, Ben. Well, you talk to him. Matt and I are going to check the hospital. Right. Thank you, Mr. Revan. <laughs> I can't imagine why anyone would do this to me. I just can't imagine. Well, did you get a look at whoever it was? I... I can't remember exactly. I know it was a man. Just as I passed out from the blow, I, I remember seeing a man's face. It was hazy, like a dream. Did you get a look at him? That's just it, Lieutenant. I can't remember. I'm not even sure there was such a man. It might have been a dream. Well, suppose we go back a little. See if you can remember everything that happened this morning. Well, I got to the office at about a quarter of eight. I started across the office and I noticed the safe. That horrible writing on it was open. I ran over to look and I could see that all the ledgers were gone, every one of them. Do you know why anybody would want to steal those ledgers? No. All right, then what happened? I called you and reported it. Mm -hmm. Well, suppose we go back a little again. On your way to work this morning, did you see anyone outside acting suspiciously? No, not a soul. Well, what happened when you called in the reporter? A man answered, no, a woman. I guess it was the operator. I said I wanted to report a burglary. And then I talked to a man and I told him what happened here. I was so upset, maybe there was someone around, and I just didn't notice it. Miss Brenner, sir, we understand you've been with the Leadbetter Company for a good long time. Is that right? Yes, yeah, 17 years. I started as a mail girl. Do you know why anybody would want to write the words hate, hate, hate across that safe? No. It's a wonderful concern. I can't think of any reason why anybody would act this way. You see, this is not an ordinary burglary. As far as we know, nothing's been taken but the records. Records that mean nothing to anyone but the people in the company. And further, burglars that we run across are generally doing their work in the middle of the night and not early in the morning when there's a chance they'll be surprised. I see. So anything that you can remember that might help to straighten this out, we would appreciate, Miss Brennan, sir. Yes. They told you when you can go home yet? No. Well, I don't think it'll be too long. You look pretty healthy to me. <laughs> you know, I feel terribly guilty about this happening. Why is that, Miss Brennister? I haven't missed a day's work in 17 years. Now, when they need me most, I'm not there to help them. Office. No one has an explanation for it. Did you check with the accounting firm? Yeah, they're having a re-audit with what information they have. Nothing wrong so far. Got some preliminary dope from the lab. Don't seem to be any foreign prints on the safe or on the pieces of the vase. 
They found matching prints all over the office. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Johnson looked at it, and the safe's an old box. Combination and locker new. It's a seven tumbler job. A real pro might be able to open it, but he'd have his work cut out for him. I guess we have too, huh? Oh, Lieutenant Guthrie and Inspector Grab. Didn't know you were out of the hospital. How do you feel? Fine. I got out late this afternoon. I simply couldn't stay there, not with them needing me so badly at the office. And it's a good thing I did. Why is that? Uh, do you remember that man, the one I was trying to tell you about? Yeah. I just saw him again. When? On my way to the office. He was on Market Street near Montgomery, walking in a crowd of people. You're sure this was the man? Yes. Funny. He was just a hazy picture to me before, not real at all, but I saw him and I know it was him. I'm positive. This is the man. He's the one I saw. That's the man. Oh, man, Yeah. His name is Tysano, John L. Tysano. Does that mean anything to you? No. He has a record of 18 months for attempted burglary. Any aliases, Matt? No, but we've got an address on him, man. I'd like to have you take another look at that picture, Miss Brenizer. The description you gave us is pretty close to this man's description, height, weight, and so forth. But we do have hundreds of other people up there with similar descriptions. I don't understand. We don't want to make a mistake, Miss Brenitzer. We're going to pick this man up on your say-so. Well, yes. But here's the whole thing. When we talked to you at the hospital, you couldn't remember what this man looked like. You weren't even sure that you'd seen him. How is it that you can remember him so clearly now? There's no mystery about that. I was dazed, shocked when I talked to you before. I'm functioning again now, and the moment I saw him, it brought it all back to me. That's the man. There's absolutely no doubt about it. All right, Fred, pick him up. This is wrong. I never heard of the lead for the company. I've already told you I just got back to town. What do you guys care where I was last week? All right, John. Let's hear it again. I've been on the road, traveling. I just got in this morning. Where were you on the night of the 18th, Tassano? 18th? I just might have stayed at the Lost Goddess Motel. Who's Goddess? Route 66, this side of Albuquerque? That's what I've been telling you for the past eight hours. Well, this is from the Albuquerque police. We asked them to check your story. You were never registered at the Los Gatos Motel. How about it, John? All right. I haven't been away. I've, I've been in town. Mm -hmm. What'd you do yesterday morning? Nothing. I didn't do nothing. I got a cold. You guys can see that. I just stayed in my room, in bed. All morning? Yeah. Ben? Covered to Santa's room from top to bottom. Searched his car, no ledgers. Found this 38 hidden behind his icebox. Yours? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I've had it around for a long time. I never used it for nothing. We're going to have to straighten this out, John. Want to put him in the lineup, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Let's go, to Santa. <laughs> John Tassano, suspicion of burglary, suspicion of assault. Step right up the square, Johnny. Where do you live, Johnny? 418 Favor Avenue. How long have you been in San Francisco, Johnny? Three years. What do you do for a living? I'm a mechanic. That's How long have you been working as a mechanic, Johnny? Are you sure? I just learned the trade. Where did you learn it, Johnny? San Quentin. All right. Bring on the next line. 
He's the man, Lieutenant. There's no doubt about it. He's the man who hit me. No. I've never seen this man before. Does the name Tassano mean anything to you? No, sir. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I know you're trying to find out what possible connection this man Tassano has with the Leadbetter Company. I wish we could help you. I thought surely the personnel office could help you, if anyone could. Have you located our ledgers yet? No, sir, we haven't. But this is the man. Well, as far as we know, Mr. Rayburn. We'd like to talk to Miss Brennan, sir, before we leave. I'm afraid you're out of luck there. She didn't show up for work today. She wasn't feeling as well as she thought she was. Could we have her home address? Yeah, sure. I doubt if she'll be gone very long. There's only two of us, you know, ever since my husband died 15 years ago. Anne wouldn't let me spend an evening alone without telling me. She'll be home soon. Well, there's just the two of you live here, Mrs. Brennitzer. Yes, that's right. Ever since my husband died, Anne's been the breadwinner of the family. I have a heart condition, you know, and there's nothing I can do except this. So it's been up to my little girl to provide for us. Well, what does she do for recreation? Does she go to the moving picture show or dancing, something like that? Oh, no, no, not my Annie. She's not the frivolous type at all. About the only thing that takes her out at night is her religious work. What kind of work is that, Mrs. Brennitzer? Well, it's a Bible class, I believe. I really haven't paid much attention. But they do some very good work down in the dock area. Well, do you know where they get together, the name of the organization, anything like that? No, no, I don't. You see, it's Anne's interest, not mine. And as long as I know I can always reach her by phone if my heart should act up, why, of course, I let her go. What is the uh, phone number there, Mrs. Brennan? Why, uh, it's uh, Yukon 969-333. Yukon 69333? Yes. Yeah, that's right. The address on Yukon 69333. Yeah? Okay, I got it, friend. Thanks. Well, if she's doing charity work on the Embarcadero three nights a week, she sure picked out a soft spot to do it in. 4612 Lombard. Pretty nice neighborhood, huh? this apartment? Yes, that's Miss Bren. One of our nicest tenants. High class, sophisticated woman. Miss Bren, huh? Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. How long has this Miss Bren been renting this apartment? Oh, it's about a year now. I understand she's a buyer at one of our better department stores. A career woman, you know. Her work takes her out of town a good deal. She's seldom home more than Probably two, three nights a week at the most. Do you have any men friends coming to visit her? Now, Lieutenant, we're not the sort of hotel yes, we that... Know, we know, we know, we know. Who is he? I don't think I've ever heard his name. Gentleman about, oh, 55. Very nice, pleasant, a good tipper. You have no idea where he works or where we'd get in touch with him? No, I don't, sir. But I'm sure Ms. Bren could tell you. Mm -hmm. Ben. To 
$2,000 if it cost a penny. Mm -hmm. What does this apartment cost? $600 a month, Lieutenant. Miss Bren has taken a five-year lease on it. I understand you wanted to talk to me again. Yes, may we talk upstairs? Yes, of course. My mother's sleeping. I'll have to ask you to keep your voices down. Mm -hmm. For understand, we don't want to upset you or your mother, Miss Brennan. So we would like to get this whole matter straightened out. I don't see where there's anything to straighten out. What do you want? We were at your other apartment today. Oh. Well? Well, there's some nice clothes over there. Pretty expensive furs. I know. I bought them. Well, we would like to get a look at your income tax returns, if possible. I'd be glad to show you my tax returns. I don't have them here. They're in my safety deposit box. You can have them tomorrow. I... I'm not sorry you've discovered this about me. I mean, living these two lives. I was a fairly pretty girl once, 15 years ago. I had dreams then. Home, future, family. My own home, my own family. And then one day I was just a lonely woman wearing glasses, working on books in an office. And my dreams for a home and a family vanished. Do you know what it means to see your dreams vanish and disappear? Not overnight, not all at once. Gradually. Gradually, over 15 long years, slip away and disappear. Never being loved. Never being able to love. Always having to care for someone else. Shoulder the responsibility. Never having anybody care for you. Dreams. Do you understand now? I understand. I'm not going to tell you his name. It isn't important, really. What is important? That you know what it means to be almost 40 and... Never to have had a man look at you as though you mean something precious to him. Never to have heard a man tell you you're beautiful. Or that he... that he loves you. He does all those things for me. He holds me in his arms. Tells me that I'm beautiful. That he cares for me. So, I've had something of dream. I suppose you'll tell Mr. Raven. Oh, I don't think that's necessary, but Inspector Greb and I have to tell you this. Those ledgers were stolen because they meant something to someone. That man, Tysano. Well... So far, we haven't been able to connect him with anything, except your identification. And there's no doubt in your mind about the identification? No, Lieutenant. No doubt whatsoever. See, we don't want to injure an innocent man. He is still the man. Yes, Lieutenant, he's still the man. started the audit yet. From what they have to work on from the auditing firm, the books are perfect so far, Ben. Well, let me know as soon as they finish. Hey, Matt. Hmm? Well, what's eating Ben? His profession. And what's the connection? Well, look, Ben's been on the force now for almost 20 years, but he's still got one bad habit. And what's that? Every case he works on, he keeps thinking of the people involved as people. Now, that can be pretty tough when a guy's a cop. And sometimes it helps make him a good one. Good night. 
Now, just a minute. That won't solve anything. Now, hello. Hello. Ann Brennitzer. So we can find the ledger books in the ocean near Seal Rocks. Said she wants to clear John to Sano before she commits suicide to wash away her sins. Well, oh, Fred, get communications. Alert all cars in the Seal Rock area. Be on the lookout for Ann Brennitzer. a dream. A dream like these clothes. That's what I did with the money. That's what I used it for. A dream. At least I had my dream. with more fun and surprises on the incredible TV20 time machine and Jack Benny right after these messages. Stay with us. Michael Gaffey and the men in his organization who have contributed their time and effort to make this program possible.